Why do I want to talk to you about differential gravitational attraction? I believe that most explanations are making you focus on the wrong thing when they say things like The moon pulls the on the moon ocean closest to it. on the oceans closest to it. This implies that the strength of that pull of that gravitational attraction is important in the formation of the tides. It isn't. The tides only form because of the gradient in that gravitational attraction across the Earth. Well, how does that work? In this fictitious solar system, suppose that this guardsman has a mass of 100 kilograms. He's being attracted downward by this planet with a force of 1000 newtons. But he's also being attracted by the gravity of some giant mass over there, which attracts him with a force of 500 newtons. Not a very plausible scenario, but useful for this explanation. Now, if you're not careful, you would think that when this guy steps onto a scale, he would weigh 500 newtons, but he won't. He will weigh considerably more. That's because he's not standing on some solid piece of immovable rock. In that case, he would weigh 500 newtons. The planet is also affected by the star's gravitational attraction. This works as a centripetal force. The force that gives the planet the centripetal acceleration. The acceleration that makes it continuously change direction and move in a curved orbit instead of a straight line. But the planet as a whole is just a bit further away from the star than the Guardsman. So it will experience a slightly lesser centripetal acceleration than the Guardsman. It's the difference between these two accelerations which the Guardsman will experience as an additional acceleration which wants to move him with respect to the planet. It's the total system of all such differences in acceleration which causes phenomena like the ocean tides. This works the same way on Earth when any external mass has a gravitational influence on us, with a gradient to that field. The Sun has a gravitational pull which makes the Earth go around it once every year. The Earth has a gravitational pull which makes the Moon go around it once a month. But, in turn, the attraction of the Moon on the Earth is far from negligible. A smaller mass does pull a larger mass away from an undisturbed orbit, even though it does not dominate the mutual movement. The Moon's gravitational attraction manages to pull the Earth away from the undisturbed orbit by some 5,000 kilometers. So, let's see how the gravitational attractions affect masses on Earth. For clarity, I'll be looking at the moment when the Sun and the Moon are aligned with the Earth, at the new Moon. The gravitational acceleration of the Earth, caused by the Moon, this is the gravitational acceleration which makes the Earth go through those monthly 5000 km deviations, is approximately 3.320 10 to the minus 5 meters per second squared. The gravitational acceleration of the Earth, caused by the Sun, this is the acceleration which makes the Earth go through the annual orbit around the Sun, is approximately 5.935 10 to the minus 3 meters per second squared. This is some 178 times stronger than the acceleration caused by the Moon. But the gravitational acceleration by the Moon on our Guardsman, who is closer to the Moon by about 6,400 kilometers, is approximately 3.433 10 to the minus 5 meters per second squared. As we have seen, it is the difference between these accelerations which the Guardsman will experience as an additional acceleration due to the Moon's gravitational attraction. This difference is 1.128 10 to the minus 6 meters per second squared. Let me point out to you, this acceleration is incredibly small. The Sun's gravitational acceleration of the Guardsman is 5.9035 10 to the minus 3 meters per second squared. So the net gravitational effect for the Guardsman is 5.055 10 to the minus 7 meters per second squared. This is less than half the gravitational acceleration caused by the Moon. As it is this difference in accelerations which determines the tendency of an external gravitational attraction to move things on Earth 
This means that the sun's attraction has far less effect than the moon's, despite the fact that the sun's attraction is 178 times stronger. The ocean tides are all about differential gravitational attraction. But now for the next step in understanding. How does this lift the ocean water into a tidal rise? As we saw, the additional acceleration caused by the gravitational attraction of the moon was 1.128, 10 to the minus 6 meter per second squared for the guardsman. Additional to what? This acceleration has to be added to all other accelerations working on the guardsman. The most obvious one in this context is the downward acceleration by Earth's own gravity. To say that Earth gravity dwarfs the moon's gravitational attraction is an understatement. It overpowers the moon's gravitational effect 8.7 million times over. It isn't hard to see how tidal fallacies have originated. Nowhere on Earth is the differential gravitational attraction by the moon greater than here, at the sublunar point, the point closest to the moon. And many people think that the water rises into a tidal bulge here at the sublunar point, although I find that very few people ever bother to check this. Then it would seem logical to think, greatest force, greatest water level rise, the water gets pulled up by the moon's gravitational attraction here. But you would be totally wrong. In fact, exactly at the sublunar point, the contribution of the moon's gravitational attraction to the tidal rise is as good as zero. In my spreadsheet, which calculates tidal accelerations from the sublunar point to the lateral point, you can see that the contribution at both points is almost zero. The tidal rise is mainly caused by the accelerations of the water at positions well away from both points. In my next video I will show you why that is and how differential gravitational acceleration does cause the oceans to rise on Earth. It's all about the correct way of applying the differential accelerations and seeing how that develops into a force which raises the water.